Welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to be having a look at how to create a copyright footer with JavaScript and Hugo. Before we get started, let's have a quick look at the final product. So we're going to make a simple footer at the bottom of the page with a copyright year and the name of the company. It's assumed you've got Hugo and Visual Studio set up on your computer already. We're going to be using JavaScript to dynamically generate the year for the footer. We're also going to be looking at how to statically generate the current year. That's the year that the website has been built with Hugo. We'll look at combining the two and Hugo will be used as the no script fallback in case JavaScript has been disabled or isn't working on the client's browser. We're also going to be looking at advanced control of the footer using parameters so we can use alternate names for the footer. We'll get to that at the end of the tutorial. So part one, we're going to look at how to use JavaScript to dynamically generate the year for the footer. So I'll put this link in the description below. You can download a sample Hugo project. I recommend you go to code and then download a zip folder to get started. If you click the use template button, it'll force you to clone it into your own GitHub account. So the easiest option is to download a zip and you can start from there. So I've opened up my project in Visual Studio Code. The first thing I'm going to do is open up a new terminal and run Hugo Server. Control click on the address and it will open it up for you in your browser. You can then see at the bottom there is a footer which was created in the previous tutorial. Now if you don't have experience setting up the basics which you can see on the screen now, I recommend you look at the previous video which I've got a link for above. What we're going to look at now is how we can generate this year in using JavaScript so that whatever the year happens to be when the user looks at the website they get an up-to-date year in the copyright notice. The first place you have to go is the layouts folder and the way this has been set up is we've got a partial for the footer. So open that up and we'll see we've used dot site dot title to put in the name of the website and we've got the code for the copyright sign and the year. The first thing we're going to look at is how to generate that year with JavaScript. So what I'm going to do, so the first thing I'm going to do is remove the year and put a span in its place. Now I need to give that span an ID so I can target it with JavaScript. I prefer to prefix my IDs used for the, for the purpose of JavaScript with JS. I'm going to call it year. We're now going to start below with our JavaScript. So we put in a script tag. So on this link, which you'll see below in the description, there are a bunch of methods you can use for getting different parts of the date out of the date function. We're going to be using get full year because we want the full year as a four digit number. So we're going to scroll down to that one. I'm going to copy and paste it um, as it's written here. We're going to make a few changes to it to make it a little bit easier to understand. So I'm going to copy that. I'm going to pop it into between the script tags. First thing I'm going to change is I'm going to change the D is alt and I click on both of after both the D's I'm going to change that to date. Um, We've got to, we're not, the ID isn't demo. If you look above in our span, the ID is js-year. So what's going to happen here is, first of all, um, we've declared our constant, which is a variable which doesn't change. Um, we've assigned that to a new date. Within JavaScript, we'll look for the element with the ID of js-year. It will then change the inner HTML, which is everything between the two span tags to the full year. There's one more thing we can do to change this to make it a little bit easier to read, although it does make the code a little bit longer, is we can put another constant in. So const js year equals the element and then we can do JS year we'll paste in that last part that makes it a little bit easier to understand although it does create more text 
after we've tested this and it works, I'll show you a shorter way of doing the whole thing. So I'm gonna save that, go back to my Hugo site, and you'll see it's now come out with the year 2021. Now confirm that that actually does work, we're gonna go back into our code, and you'll notice there is no actual year written in there. So that's a success. And one extra thing we can add in here, and this is so we can write the code shorter. Okay, just below here, I'm gonna do, put in our first part of code, that's where we're targeting the span. And then I'm gonna put in dot inner HTML, equals, and then I'll put new date, and then as you can see we've got date there, and then dot get full year. That involves a little bit uh, more knowledge of JavaScript, and a little bit more prior planning, missed the full stop there but that will create the same result, let's test it out. So we'll save it, we'll see it, uh, Hugo's refreshed. And you can use this um, even just with pure HTML, you don't need um, Hugo to, to be running this, it's just pure JavaScript. Let's go back and we'll see that it's still working. So that's a success for our JavaScript. Let's now have a look at how we can use Hugo to statically generate the year. So to get Hugo to statically generate the year, and that's the year when the site gets built or rebuilt or updated, we're going to have to use two different functions. The first one is the now function, which generates the current time, and we're going to use the format function, which formats the current time based on the format that you provide. So there's an example here. They've used the published date of the current page, and they're formatting it like so. And that's what gets output. That output, and that's that's assuming it, that the page was published on March the third, twenty seventeen. You do have to use this date, however, to get it to work properly. We're not going to use the publish date. We're going to use a function called now, which returns the current local time based on the computer where the site's being built. And there's actually an example here, which we can use straight on our footer. It even has the copyright sign, which is pretty straightforward. So I'm just gonna copy and paste that. And I'm gonna paste it in here. I'm gonna remove the that span and I'm gonna just pop it below. I'll get rid of the copyright and I'm gonna comment it out for now. So control KC is a shortcut for commenting out in Visual Studio Code. And I'm going to save that. And we're going to have a look if Hugo's doing a good job of generating this. Remember, there is no year currently there. So we'll go back to the browser. We can see that it's automatically rebuilt the website because we're running Hugo server. And you'll see there we've got the current year, which is great. The only problem with this is next year, or the year when you're watching this video, um, that year is not going to be correct. If you do make a change to the website and you have to regenerate it, whether it's you're re rebuilding it on your local computer or you're using an online service like Netlify and you're rebuilding it there, it will update to the current year. But on the 1st of January, when someone visits your website, there's probably a very high chance that that's going to be out of date. And look, it doesn't really matter from a legal point of view, but you want customers to think that your website's up to date and you're still in business and you're... So we're gonna have a look at how we can use this as a fallback and use JavaScript to actually generate it. So if a person hasn't got JavaScript enabled, then it will go to the fallback. So I'm gonna uncomment. So control KU is a shortcut in Visual Studio Code for uncommenting. And I'm gonna place that text back in there the span. I'm going to put a space in there. I'm just going to save it and check it out and we'll see we've got the two dates. The first one's our JavaScript date and the second one's our Hugo date. Let's now put in a no script tag for the Hugo. So I'm not going to leave any space um, after that span. I'm going to put in no script and 
drag it there. We've now got our span, which is blank unless JavaScript kicks in. And then if the browser knows that JavaScript's disabled or the browser doesn't support JavaScript, it will use the no script tag. Let's give that a go. So to disable JavaScript in Chrome, I go to inspect, which we use the right click for, and then I'm gonna to go to control shift P. Otherwise, it's up in the menu here, run command, control shift P, start typing in JavaScript and disable JavaScript. Now you cannot close this window, you've got to minimize it refresh it and you'll see we've still got our date available there. Now to check that it is actually working, we're going to go back into Visual Studio Code. I'm going to do Control X to get rid of that Hugo code and then we'll go back into the browser. And you'll notice there's nothing there. That confirms that the NoScript is working because currently there is nothing in NoScript. So let's do Control Z, save it, you'll see it's refreshed. And there we go. Now all you gotta do to turn JavaScript back on is just close that window and refresh. And the last part of this video is using advanced parameters to control the footer. So say for example, you don't like the text you've currently got in that footer. Now I've set that to use the title of the website. So here's the title of our website, which we've set in the configuration file. That's been put straight in there. So let's have a look at some options that we can use to allow us a higher level of control. So the first thing I'm gonna do is we're going to look at a function called default. So I'm going to change it from .site.title to .site.copyright. Put a space in and use a pipe, which is above the enter key, the shift. And then a pipe allows you to run a second command after the first one. So we're going to put in default, which is our function. And that's going to tell Hugo that if the site, if the copyright parameter has not been defined in your site's config, then default, this is what the default's gonna be. So I'm gonna to default to dot site dot title. I'm gonna save that. Let's go back to the site and we'll see that nothing's changed. So let's go into our config file. So let's go to our config file. I'm gonna put in the copyright parameter. Remember, we are putting in a top level parameter here. It's not nested like the one below. So it's really important that you put your top level configs first and then your nested config second when you're using Toml or it will not work properly. It's part of the Toml standard. So I'm gonna put, for example, uh, the name of this channel, Future Web Design, save that. If it doesn't update, you'll have to restart the server. It usually picks it up and you'll see there we've got Future Web Design. Now there is one more thing I like to do, and that is the option of replacing this all together if we want to do an override. So we're going back to our footer. Now just for reference, if, if I turn this off, so I put a, a hash before it, you see we've gone back to our original. So I'll leave it like that for now. I'm now gonna put in an override. So we've defaulted back to the title. Let's put an override. So we're gonna use a little logic here. So I'm gonna put in with dot site dot params dot footer. Now this is a custom parameter and that's why I've started it with a lower case. All of Hugo's, in, Hugo's included parameters, they start with capitals but I always start my own and it's very common practice with lowercase. Now, that's a, that's a conditional, it's like an if, but it actually assigns that parameter 
uh, to the dot context. And that's a little bit confusing if you're new to Hugo or Go, the Go templating language. All we have to do to display that is to put a single dot. Now, if Hugo can't find this parameter, the footer parameter, we provide an else statement. And then it will fall back to the original copyright footer. Let me put in end. So let's save that and it shouldn't have changed because we haven't assigned that footer yet. So you'll see everything's still working well. Let's go back to our config file. We're now going to put in params. And inside params, we're going to put in footer. And we're going to just put in here custom footer text. And the other thing we'll do is we'll enable markdown. So it can include, we'll put some bold in. So in markdown to do bold, you do a double asterisk. Can include markdown and double asterisk after that. So we'll save that. I haven't enabled markdown yet, so you'll notice I've got those asterisks. But the way we do that is we go back into our command here. And there's two ways you could do it. You could do it here, put in the pipe, and in lowercase, markdownify. And we'll save that. You'll notice it's now bold. Um, the other way you could do it is you could pop it up here in the with command. I'm going to leave it down here. Gives me a bit more control. All right, um, let's experiment a bit. So you could take away one of those asterisks to get italic. There you go. Can include markdown. Um, and to configure that, say you want to go back to the original one, which is what this video is all about. We've just got to comment out and we've gone back to the else which is what we did originally. Also with our, our fallback in case JavaScript isn't working. So I've put a link below for a repository which includes all the code from today's video. So if you're having any trouble, just go to the link and download the code as a zip file or if you want, you can clone it if you're more experienced with Git and you can troubleshoot and see how you go. If you've got any questions or comments, please leave them in the comments area below. And as usual, please subscribe to my channel to get updates, hit that bell, and please leave a thumbs up if you enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching.